you you got to be cool, calm, and collected under pressure. I mean, that's extremely important. One thing you got to stop doing is you got to stop saying that people don't support my business. You know, when you say that, you sound weak, you sound needy, and you sound like you don't understand business when you say, my family and friends don't support my business. I used to say that too. But then I started realizing that my family and my friends were not my customers. They're my family and my friends. Stop looking for your family and your friends to be your customers. You want real customers? Go out and meet strangers, okay? You can meet strangers face to face or you can meet them easier on the internet. That's why I'm telling people to create content all the time. Create content for TikTok, for, for Facebook, YouTube, all over social media. Create content for your, your online community and get your product and service in front of people. And that's gonna give you real feedback from the real marketplace, which the marketplace is just a place where people are buying. That's gonna give you real feedback from the marketplace that will let you know if you have a product or service that people really value. Because when people value something, they pay for it. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do is you need to understand that your family and friends are not your customers. Your customers are people that have never met you before. And if nobody is buying from your business, you may have a couple of problems. Number one, not enough people know your business exists. Number two, even if they know your business exists, maybe you're not clearly communicating the value that your product or service offers. You might be marketing to the wrong people. It could be the packaging, okay? Maybe you're using the wrong words. Maybe you're not displaying it correctly. There could be a plethora of reasons why no one is buying from you. But to insinuate that people aren't supporting your business, it sounds like you think that business is a charity and business is definitely not a charity. If you're looking for a charity, go start a nonprofit and just walk up and ask people for money. But if you are in business and if you really wanna be an entrepreneur and if you really wanna get into sales, learn how to sell. You sell by understanding why people purchase in the first place. And when you understand why someone would purchase something in the first place, now you have a ground to stand on. Now you understand what it takes to be a business owner. Well, partially, because there's a whole lot of other things that comes with being a business owner too. You gotta learn that. But to say that nobody is supporting your business, psh, just get out of here with that. Because when you're a business owner, everything, everything revolves around you. Especially if you're 100% the owner, you know, if you are the decision maker. Sometimes it can feel like you're always putting out fires. And what I've learned over the years is that the fire is never as big as what we imagine in our minds. And once you realize that, once you have enough fires that you put out over the years or over time, you start realizing that the most important thing is for you to be cool, calm, and collected. Because a calm mind will make better decisions in comparison to a chaotic mind. See, that's why I meditate a lot. And I'm just like everybody else. I'm human as well. You know, one call, one email can make it look like the whole entire world is falling down. But it's not, it's rarely that. And so as an entrepreneur, learn how to regulate your central nervous system. Learn how to control yourself. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just by knowing how to breathe, consciously breathing, inhaling, and slowly exhaling. Next time you get a crazy email, text message, or a phone call, before you react, just stop, and go somewhere real quick, and just breathe and that'll change a lot of things for you. I truly believe that you can will things into existence. 
especially in reference to wealth. I've done it so many times. There's been times where I had, you know, two seconds on the clock to pay a bill. And at the last second, the money came through. In the beginning, I started out with nothing, 25 cent to my name. And that taught me to, that taught me to be extremely resilient, extremely patient, and extremely convicted in my faith that with the power of my mind, man, I could move mountains. And nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, as long as I stay convicted to the belief that I could move mountains, the mountains moved. They moved every single time. So I want to remind you, if you're going through things in your business or just in life in general, decide the outcome that you want and be stubborn when it comes to holding on to that image, that vision for yourself. Stay convicted in your faith that no matter what happens, you can move mountains. You can truly move mountains. All right. All right, so finally we can probably start heading home for the day. Usually I get out of here pretty early, but today, today is a little different. Today we needed a little extra time. So let's go home, do some workouts, and go from there. Mm -hmm.